Hello everyone, I'm Rob Mills and I'll be your host today. Today we're here to talk about Medi Records. Medi Records is a standout Aussie med tech success story in pioneering cloud-based electronic health records and patient management systems. For over 13 years, Medi Records has partnered with Matreas to boost its software development capabilities and to drive digital innovation. Today's session will cover how the partnership began, why Medi Records chose Matreus, and how this collaboration has helped deliver the Medi Records platform. We'll also explore the real world impact on clients, the challenges that were faced, and what's ahead in their transformation journey. Now, please join me in welcoming today's speakers. Fei Teng is the Chief Technology Officer, and Matthew Galetto is the CEO and founder of Medi Records. So, Matthew, can you share a bit about your background, please? Yeah, sure. Happy to. Um, I've been working in health technology for about 25 years now. Prior to that, I was a marine biologist and a scientist, and then uh, did a number of um, had a number of roles in banking in, in the UK, but came back and um, ended up um, in health technology, and uh, yeah, founded Many Records um, about 13 years ago. And Faye, can you tell us a little bit about your background? And your role here at Medi Records? Uh, I've been in IT industry for almost more than 20 years. And before Medi Records, I worked for CSIRO and Fujitsu and some other petty health companies. And that before I joined Medi Records, I, I worked actually in the, as a research engineer in the CSIRO. And after joining Medi Records, um, I worked initially as a, like the DevOps lead and eventually become a CTO at Medi Records. And uh, right now I'm the, you know, the, the, the CTO at Magic Cause managing like more than over 70 engineers. So Matthew, what's the core mission of Medi Records? What problem are you trying to solve and how do you address it? Sure. Um, Medi Records core mission is to be the number one trusted partner of clinical practice in Australia. Um, we seek to move, um, old legacy technology systems onto the cloud and be the number one cloud provider in country. And by doing that, we bring security, AI, and a whole bunch of other sort of enterprise uh, tooling and capability to what is otherwise uh, legacy technology that just don't have access to that sort of um, innovation. And, and Faye, so that mission being what it is, how have you been challenged in delivering that over the, your time at Medi Records? Yeah, sure. So I would say I divided into two parts. One part is internal, the other part is external. From external perspective, so how do we deliver the best product and how you analyze the market and how do you make sure the product you deliver is the best. Internally, I would say there are also three pillars inside, like a people, tooling, and system. So how do you hire the best talent in the world and bring them into medical house working for you? And also the tools, what are the tools you select in order to improve the internal efficiencies and also the... Um, the system as well, because in, in, in medical health, we have what we call like a way of working. So how do we bring all these people together and then to work efficiently and effectively? So Matt, I know it's a long time ago now, but do you recall why you selected Matras? Um, well, it was almost 18 years ago uh, and it was a referral, but I can't recall uh, who or, or why. Um, the Medi Records was a, about a 13 year journey with Matreas, but prior to that, there was about four or five years where I worked with a business called Asterix, which was a clinical and data analytics business. And I had uh, engaged with Matreas for about four or five years um, with about four or five developers, actually, and a little bit more, um, uh, which led into, into the Medi Records journey. Faye, what are some of the key challenges that you've faced in overcome? Well, there are actually a, a few all of them. And then a lot of them can be treated as a very typical like lessons learned. As so the one of them it could be how do you quickly scale up the team? It's very under, you know, especially during the COVID time where every single company in the whole world is trying to hire developers. And how do you scale your queen so quickly to accomplish uh, kind of the third largest, uh, you know, health project in Australia? So the strategy way we use is, you know, we we kind of work remotely. We allow you know people work from home, and also we hire people from multiple cities in Australia. And also we you know partner with like the the, the offshore company like Mitrice to help us to hire more developers as well. So some organisations that we talk to about offshore development, 
worry about issues like intellectual property protection, uh, time zones, code quality, and other things. So what are some of those challenges and how do you manage them uh, in our relationship with Metronas? Okay. Uh, there definitely are a few challenges related to the you know time zones, the IPs and data security. I think uh, for, for many because we have to treat them differently. So for example, for the, for the IPs, so first you need to select a trust partner. You don't want to work with a company that have like two, three developers, and even though it's cheaper, but the, you, then you need to worry about the other perspective, like IPs. For sec data securities, we have um, you know, the ISO uh, 27001 certified. We have quite a material process in terms of how we protect data, what is the process to you know, deal with data, and also how do you audit the data as well. And in terms of the you know, technical expertise, um, in my opinion, the talent people is not just in Australia, it's all over the world. So you just need to spend time and work with the right partner to find the right talent. I could talk to a little bit about the IP piece because I already was aware of um, some of Matreus's other customers, large scale enterprise customers operating here in Australia. Um, that um, you know had contracts with government entities here as, as well. So the idea of um, good governance, corporate and IP was already um, well established. So Faye, how do your offshore and onshore team work together and what strategies can you suggest to anyone who's going to pursue this? All right. So, so first is we, we try to not bring those two keywords into any conversation, right? So we don't want to trade say, this group of people offshore and this group of people onshore. We, we treat them almost the same, uh, in the same ways. So this reflected into, let's say, we're not giving them a task. It we're more like sharing the vision with them. We'll tell them what we want to achieve. We're telling them who are our customers. And then we share almost all the knowledge we have. We're even you know, doing the performance review internally that is aligned with offshore as well. So we bring all of the standard into basically everyone having the, the shared vision the same standard, and then we don't treat them differently. And when you don't treat them differently, they, they will think they're also the medical employee as well. We've been working together for a long time. How do you feel about your original decision to partner with Matreas? And what advice would you give to organizations considering an offshore development team? I'm very comfortable with my decision to partner with Matreas, and I think the 18 years is a testament to, to that longstanding relationship. Um, in terms of advice that I would give um, other companies, um, perhaps located here in Australia, um, I would be certainly encouraging them to go and visit, number one, to have a real connection with the, the management team and just generally see what the operations look like. And you'll get that confidence um, around particularly that, that corporate governance and the, the, the setup that they've got um, up and running at any of the offices, in, you know, whether they be in Bali, Jakarta, Bandung, um, or, uh, Georgia Carter. The, so connection is really important, uh, human connection. The, in terms of other sort of advice, it's really providing context and clarity around what it is that you're trying to achieve and what tasks and assignments and projects that you want the team to, to work on and establishing that framework upfront would be, you know, a key, um, factor in the success of the, the engagement with Matreus or um, any firm, whether they be located in Australia or otherwise. otherwise. So they'd be my two main points, human connection, and then really establish a clear set of goals and articulate what it is that you're trying to achieve um, through a project-based set of scope of work or um, perhaps just a, an engagement as Faye was talking about, how those the team members that, that are augmenting your local team would operate within the framework of how you work um, and do your software development. What are the key reasons you think that sustained our partnership? Trust is the first thing that comes to mind and having that human connection with the management team and also the team that make up the many records, uh, family of uh, engineers, product owners, BAs, and, um, you know, quality, uh, assurance manager, uh, engineers that we engage Matreas to, um, provide all of those types of services um, within many records. Flexibility has been pretty key. I mean, we've had a uh, set of projects at many records over the last several years in particular, where we've had to flex up and down 
our capacity and capability to deliver large-scale projects. And we've been able to call on Matreus um, at those times to either scale up the team in order to deliver these, you know, the, these projects with very short notice. And they've been very accommodating and helped us find the right people at the right time so that we could execute on those uh, agreements. And at the back end of it, where we, you know, had to scale down because the project activity is completed, we've been able to do that uh, as well, and then scale up again uh, as needed. So that flexibility has been pretty key to the relationship and allowing many records to um, just deliver, you know, large scale projects in a fairly sort of fluctuating environment. Matt, what does your current roadmap look like and how do you see Matreus contributing to that? We have uh, four product streams. We have uh, Medi Records Evolve, which is an AI product stream. Care, which is our clinical and administrative system used by clinicians in the, the, the delivery of care to patients. We have a patient mobile application uh, as well. And we've got Connect, which is a API and Firebase uh, enable platform that allows Medi Records to connect to the broader um, Australian health ecosystem using the latest standards. Um, Matreus are very much part of delivery of um, roadmap features and improvements across all those four product streams. As Faye mentioned earlier, the Matreus team are embedded and well and truly into the teams that represent the uh, delivery of uh, you know, features and benefits to customers across Evolve, uh, Care, Connect and Engage. So we see a continuation of the, you know, the relationship with Matreus so that we can deliver those features and this very active roadmap over the next couple of years uh, to, to our customers, both in terms of our existing customers and also the new customers, because we want to we wanna grow. And uh, there's, there's a lot to do here. So Matt, literally AI is everywhere. And I note that you've got a product stream for AI. How do you see AI being utilized in uh, the healthcare space? Well, it's a very exciting opportunity that lies ahead and um, I'm very bullish on AI and the value that it can bring to customers and also to ourselves internally and how we can improve the way we do our work. Um, but in terms of the product, um, we've got a fairly clear strategy around how AI can um, improve productivity and the quality of um, outcomes for, for patients. Um, the productivity piece is around saving time. Um, electronic health record systems are very complicated and navigating those systems to get that information at the right time um, is critical. Um, AI is a huge enabler of solving that problem. And we've recently actually uh, developed, deployed, and now in, is in market a patient summary AI that does that very thing. It saves multiple uh, clicks of navigating the system to access the different information. It presents in context uh, at point of care for the clinician with the patient in front of them um, a set of AI-generated uh, summaries um, that is hugely um, efficient and being very, very well received by um, our customers. And we intend to extend that capability to other parts of the application. Many Records is a patient system of records uh, application and platform, and we have a deep set of workflows that sit on top of that, but we have a, a rich set of data that we want to unlock uh, to, for the value of our, our customer. And AI is going to be a big driver of that unlock, if you like, um, providing tremendous um, you know, opportunity. Clinicians um, are, you know, burnt out. We hear about you know, clinician burnout. They're overworked. The administrative overhead is 30% of their total sort of workload, which is outrageous. Um, and we, we know that the, you know, demand is there with an aging population and comorbidity. And so all the macro indicators and external drivers for, um, are, are there to say, hey, technology needs to be a big enabler of how we can actually scale uh, digital health services. And, you know, we're a big believer in how AI can enable that. So Faye, what would be your one final message to anyone who's considering using offshore software development teams? One final message from me is, if you want your offshore members to treat your company as their family, then you should treat them as a family member first. And Matt, do you have any final messages for anyone who's considering using offshore software development teams? Um, I have a few points 
Um, just following on the, the trust theme, it's around the corporate governance of the organization to make sure that they're following the best practices in, in, in how they um, engage with uh, clients like ourselves. Scale and depth of the capability of the individuals and the team that are um, providing the service. Um, not really, it's not really necessary to focus on price per se, because there are other alternatives um, in India and the Philippines, for example. Um, so you really want to have that trust, corporate governance, and that scale and depth of capability of the organization to really um, give you the confidence um, in um, bringing that, those team members into your um, way of working and the operating model that you're delivering. Matthew, Faye, thanks so much for joining us today. That's been a really valuable discussion, and I'm sure that our viewers have got a lot of insights out of everything you've had to say. Thanks very much. Now, it's my pleasure, and thank you for, for coming in. And to the audience, thanks for joining us. We hope you found today's session useful and that you gained a clearer view of the benefits of cloud-based EHR. If you'd like to know more about how MediRecords can support your healthcare goals, or how Matreas can help deliver your next project, please feel free to reach out. That's a wrap for today's session. Have a great day, and we look forward to seeing you at a future event.